The detachment to Lossiemouth, named Exercise Totten Warrior, was a workup for Exercise Air Warrior, which was to take place in the United States. A full squadron deployment, it marked the start of the busy exercise season. Once the main support party arrived, the aircraft soon followed and everybody settled into the new environment. The area is superb for the pilots, as it contains some of the finest low-level flying terrain in the country, and is within easy reach of the live weapons range at Garvey Island in the north of Scotland, near Cape Wrath. There's, uh, there's a certain challenge to the recce, particularly line searching, I think is one of the hardest things we do. But uh, everybody likes to see bombs going off and, and destroying targets. You know, strafing and bombing is very difficult to enjoy taking a picture as much as as much as it is to watch a target disintegrate while you strafe it with 30mm uh, HE. So draw your own conclusions from that. But recce is, is an entirely different challenge. And when you do stay on a line, on a tricky line search, and pick up all the targets and get them on the imagery when you come back, it's, uh, it's very satisfying, very satisfying indeed. Squadron does not normally have much opportunity to fly in the north of Scotland. So Tartan Warrior provided a valuable opportunity to successfully prepare for Exercise Air Warrior in Nevada in August, where the sorties would be flown at low level. After a long period doing medium level reconnaissance in Bosnia, it was good to get current with low level flying. The workload was high and packages were flown with Tornado and F-15 aircraft. The engineering support was always present and 41 RIC had set up their mobile clutch of air transportable reconnaissance exploitation laboratories, or ATROLs for short. Now it was time for the squadron to deploy to the Nevada desert in the United States for Exercise Air Warrior. This time the RIC were not involved as it was a United States Army exercise which concentrated on close air support and forward air control. 41 fighter squadron aircraft were tanked to the Azores, Halifax, Lincoln, Nebraska, then into Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. This was the first time a Jaguar squadron had been involved in this particular exercise, and only the previous year had marked the inaugural participation of the Royal Air Force. Nellis Air Force Base is approximately 20 minutes from the center of Las Vegas. However, the priority that armies always placed on the dawn strike meant that the working hours were long and 3 a.m. starts rather curtailed the opportunity to explore the unique charm of Las Vegas. Uh, this exercise, 41 Squadron, achieves a lot for the pilots. Uh, it's very hard work for the, the lineys and the other ground crew. Uh, the, the weather conditions are really astronomical. This is the hottest place I've ever been. Even the Gulf wasn't this warm. Um, but the people are quite strange. Good. We've got a hotel down in uh, Vegas, and uh, it's quite a nice, nice place to be at. Not much of a gambler, but uh, we've had a look around some of the, the casinos. We say exercise mainly is for the, the pilots' benefit. It's for their low-level sort of tactics and things. And for us, it puts us under pressure to get the airplanes up in the more, you know, for all the waves and things. So it's two-pointed really. During Exercise Air Warrior, the squadron was working alongside A-10 and F-16 aircraft. The exercise was based around two opposing army brigades, both of which were equipped with considerable amounts of armour and artillery. The air forces were split into two factions, one known as Blue Air and the other as Red Air. In this exercise, the American pilots were on the side of all things good, and the Jaguars acted as the enemies of democracy, intent on destroying the American way of life. Much of the squadron's flying was through the deserts and hills of Nevada. The splendor of the desert and Death Valley were awe-inspiring, and it truly was easy for pilots to become distracted from their primary task. No other exercise has provided the spectacle of 40 Abrams tanks moving at speed, producing dust clouds up to 100 feet high. The close air support might become confused by the genuine fog and dust of war. The squadron developed a reputation for providing real time. flew six aircraft coordinated attacks. 
the squadron were operating with both ground-based forward air control parties and also with airborne controllers flying and circling aircraft. Operating with the United States forces provided an insight into the way the squadron and indeed NATO need to fight if involved in future conflicts. For many of the squadron's junior pilots, the exercise provided valuable training that is not readily available in the United Kingdom. The objectives here at Air Warrior are to uh, provide a training environment uh, for both the Army and the Air Force says, to be able to train together. Uh, in a realistic combat environment. And I think we do that very well because the National Training Center provides uh, a large piece of terrain, if you will, that the Army is maneuvering in, uh, practicing their battle, focusing at the brigade level, if you will. Uh, and then on top 